Hey, everybody, and welcome to Leading Indicator. I'm Kinsey Baker, and we've got a great conversation teed up today, so let's jump right in. I am joined today by Chuck Cook, an original Tesla beta Tesla, excuse me, I'm going to start that one over. <laughs> I'm joined today by Chuck Cook, an original beta tester for Tesla's full self-driving technology. Chuck was one of the lucky few to check out Tesla's brand new driverless robo-taxis in Austin, Texas last week. They launched as what Elon Musk has called the, quote, culmination of a decade of hard work. Now, Elon Musk has said before that Tesla is starting small with this rollout before expanding to a thousand of these driverless cabs within a few months. So knowing what that means for us now is important. I'm personally wondering, what were the robo-taxis like? How might they help Tesla amp up a new business line amid lagging sales, some backlash to Elon Musk from consumers? How does a ride like this compare to something like Uber or Waymo? Is this the way of the future? Lots of big questions. We're going to cover a ton today. And so without further ado, I'm, I'm really excited to welcome Chuck to Leading Indicator. Chuck, how's it going? Oh, it's going great, Kenzie. Thanks for bringing me on. And uh, I have to say, you know, I haven't accepted many of these interviews, so uh, I'm glad to join you guys here at Leading Indicator. Yeah, we're super excited to have you. I, I'm eager to hear about what your experience was like. You know, it, it still feels like a little bit of, you know, futuristic cartoon when we think about these, these self-driving cars, this full self-driving tech. Um, it's something that I personally am still kind of getting used to the idea of. So with that in mind, I want to kick us off here by hearing about the experience. You know, they, they launched these robo taxis in Austin, as I mentioned over the weekend. Um, you and a, a select few other Tesla investors and, and technologists uh, were given the opportunity opportunity to ride in one of these taxis. So how was it? What was the experience like for you? Yeah, well, thanks for uh, kind of teeing it up that way. It, it was really kind of surreal. You know, we kind of knew that this robo taxi launch was going to be sometime in June. You know, Elon kind of drew that line in the sand, you know, for his teams, and they, we knew they were pushing hard to get to this milestone. And as FSD owners of, on our cars, we kind of could tell they were working hard on this because we weren't getting as many updates on our personal cars. And we're like, something's changed here. Their heads down into the into the getting this robo taxi across the line. And boy, I, did they deliver? They they did it in June. You know, the date shifted kind of back and forth there were some rumored dates but there was never a, a slip of an official date it was uh ended up being 22nd it was a last minute thing uh and I, when i say last minute you know my invitation to come came on a friday for a sunday event and as you might imagine getting to austin where i don't live i live in florida as many of you that follow my youtube channel know uh, you know, kind of dropping everything and making the decision, you know, do I want to be there on day one? And uh, I, I made the decision to get my butt to Austin and be ready to go. Um, and, you know, we uh, we got delivered a, a brand new app, which is called the RoboTaxi app. You know, we had speculated it was going to be part of the Tesla app and part of our profiles. But no, it was a brand new uh, app. It was deployed using some of the iOS technology called Test Flight. So it's a sort of a uh, initial beta uh, version of the app. And there's some things they're working on. But, you know, as far as a first launch of an app, it, it really seamlessly installed. It, it uh, used OAuth authentication with my Tesla cloud profile. So all of my Spotify channels were in the car. Everything worked really, really great as far as the cloud profiles. But hailing that first ride and having it come pick me up, you know, at the block where I ordered it and, and take me to a destination without a driver in the seat, it was truly... Um, it was a big day, but I also have to say it was also uneventful. I was like, you know, this drives just like my car does. There's just nobody in the seat, you know, uh, and we could legally do that. You know, the uh, the safety observer was still in the car, but I really want to very clearly say this is not a safety oper operator, a safety driver. It was a safety observer, and the safety observers were there for our safety, but really – to get anything approved with a, you know, any regulatory agency, you've kind of got to take these steps, whether or not they be implemented by the regulator to say you have to do this first and then we'll approve it. Uh, Tesla's just doing what they can to, to start small, uh, use the safety operators as the insurance uh, that everything is going to launch smoothly. And every single one of my rides, and I took about seven of them, went flawlessly. And I know there's a couple clips out there running around where you say, oh, look, it did. The steering wheel wiggled a little bit. I didn't have any of those, and I'm sure there are some out there. But uh, listen, everybody got where they wanted to go, and it worked uh, pretty much as expected. Um, so it was really exciting, and um, I'll, I'll just kind of leave it there. It was a great first day, and uh, maybe you got a few other questions. Yeah, definitely. You know, you bring up some really interesting points here that I want to dig into a little bit more. Um, I certainly was curious about the app. It, it's interesting to hear that it, it worked as smoothly as it did really on that first go round. I think when we consider a lot of companies that call themselves tech companies, regardless of what their, their product is, Tesla is one that really stands out as a, a 
tech forward tech company. Um, so I, I imagine that that has has certainly um, you know influenced the the rollout of of this app. Beyond that, you know, the experience in the car with the the safety observer. You bring up this idea of of regulation that there might be some you know hiccups or speed bumps along the way as Tesla and and really any other entity interested in FSD tech in these robo taxis and driverless cars is going to face is you know regulation in Texas specifically I understand there has been a lot of back and forth about there will be no regulation there will be regulation I'm curious to hear just your general perspective on Tesla's approach to to that regulation you know do you think that it's going to be a meaningful speed bump so to speak for for these driverless cabs uh, or is it something that that they can rise to the occasion to and, and sort of solve as they go yeah so I'm going to answer my uh, this question with a perspective from my my professional career. So many of you that know who I am, I'm a professional pilot. I've been a pilot in, in aviation 25 years in the Navy and, and now uh, 21 years with a commercial airline. Um, regulation is an important part of public safety. It has to be there so that companies don't bend the rules uh, in order to deploy something faster or to do something unsafe. You know, the systems that we put uh, the public into have to be regulated. They don't have to be, but it keeps everybody on the same playing field. And honestly, it keeps uh, uh, you know a, a good safe process in place. Things move slower with regulation, though. Make no doubt, it's it's more difficult to make change. You know, once something gets approved to get it to get it updated, it has to go back through the the process, and and things can be slower that way. But I think if you look at the aviation safety record, you can at least say the testament uh, of of how it's done can be done successfully albeit a little bit slow and lethargic to change. I do think Tesla's approach to this is spot on, starting small. You know, we've been, but we've been watching it almost happen for so long. The anticipation was so high. And in a tech startup kind of environment like Tesla kind of lives in, we kind of wanted a zero to a hundred, you know, kind of a performance and we, which is unrealistic in deploying a public safety uh, type of system such as a robo taxi. And right now we don't have a federal standard for regulation. So it's down to the states. And you can argue that a little bit of his, you know, dealing in the, in the politics, this is perhaps to see if we can get some improvement on that through NHTSA and any sort of Department of Transportation uh, national regulation policy. It could help so that states are easy to roll out quicker so we don't have to do something different in Texas and California and Florida and all the other states that want to get this to come along. So I think that would benefit. Um, you know, Tesla's kind of going through that with insurance a little bit right now. You might say, why don't we have te Tesla insurance everywhere? It's because it's locally uh, state regulated and each state has its own requirements. So uh, like while in Florida, I can't get Tesla insurance. Uh, and even though I want to try it, uh, it's just not available for me yet there. And I also think Tesla insurance is another kind of a good roadmap of how navigating regulators takes an undetermined amount of time sometimes. You might say we're gonna have it next month, but then something happens that you unexpected and then you don't meet your customer's expectations. So I think it's good to be patient and understand and to follow the law. And Elon has gone on record, I believe, saying that you know safe and effective regulation is important both in, in uh, driving and even in space and space operations. I think he's gone on record saying that too. Yeah, yeah, you know, famously not on on your timeline, you're on the regulator's timeline. So it's it's a good right. point to bring up. I appreciate the context there. Now, one thing I want to get your perspective on in addition to all that we've we've covered already is this idea of competition in the marketplace. You know, when we're talking about these driverless taxis, these robo taxis from Tesla, we're talking about potential competition from other driverless tech companies like Waymo, uh, but also from you know the ride hailing platforms that many of us are, are super familiar with, Uber, Lyft, and, and the like. I would love to hear your perspective on what the competitive landscape is like for something like these robo taxis that Tesla is rolling out. Obviously, that's, that's looking into the future, uh, but I'm, I'm curious to hear what you think. Yeah, so my perspective is only is with Waymo, and I have taken uh, Waymo's many times in the San Francisco area. And in that area, you load the Waymo One app, and then you hail a, a Waymo, and it comes and gets you. Typically, you have to walk to a location where a pickup or drop-off location is designated, and that's a little bit of a workaround for perhaps Waymo having safe spots or good spots for pickup and drop-off, and not just anywhere a customer uh, might want to be picked up. Um, and I, and I, my first one was a little bit interesting. You know, the way most stick out, you see one and it's a tourist attraction. People pull out their cameras and start taking pictures of it and pointing at it, noticing no one's in the driver. You know, the robo taxis in Austin, 
nobody even noticed we were in there. You know, there were people sitting on the curb right next to us at a stoplight and didn't realize we were in a robo taxi because there was no one in the driver's seat. You know, you really pay attention. You see there's no driver. You might kind of go, oh, look, there's one. So I, I do think that the, the Waymo stick out a little bit more. Uh, the experience... Um, I think it, it, the, the robo-taxi to me on my seven or eight drives compared to my Waymo's was much smoother than a Waymo, but the performance was about the same. But the approach is so drastically different that I think the scalability of these platforms is where they will start to deviate in their ability to deliver service to more and more customers. You know, everybody knows that Waymo's are much more expensive than the current model wide robo taxi and ultimately the cyber cab that will be coming out next year is gonna be even another threshold of cost uh, savings for Tesla to deliver this performance. Um, but the, the the strategy of using a vision only approach is completely different from the LiDAR based um, uh, solution that, that Waymo is using. So honestly, I think I don't want to say it's too early to tell. I feel like Tesla is on a good footing. They feel like they can scale faster. Um, and I think that both of them can succeed in this market. I think Tesla can get more on the road sooner uh, than Waymo is. And some people have made the analogy that Tesla on Sunday is where Waymo was 12 years ago. And I think that's a fair statement. You know, they first launched the service. And then you come out and say, but Tesla next week could be where Waymo was, you know, 10 years ago. And Waymo next month could be where Waymo is today. And then Waymo... Uh, you know, it, so it, the, the scaling curve could be just so drastically better as long as everything goes smoothly and they get, um, you know, these cities approved and the geofenced areas mapped or take the geofences away if that's their choice to do that. The experience on the app felt very similar, hailing uh, a fair, choosing your car, where do you want to go? The map experience felt very, very similar. I will say that the, the Tesla RoboTaxi app, even on its very first iteration, worked amazingly well. I didn't even have to enter a credit card because Tesla already had one from my Tesla account. Uh, it, it was Really, and they only were charging four dollars and twenty cents per ride, which was a flat fee. We really don't know where the customer facing pricing model will be, but I just kind of have a feeling it's going to be low, meaning like lower. I don't think they're going to try to recoup any costs here. I think they want an industry leading cost structure to to show that they do have an ability of generating revenue here. Uh, so I, I think there's room everywhere. I don't think this is a Waymo killer, nor do I think we would want a Waymo killer. I think competition is good. I think it keeps you honest. I think it makes you make your product better. Um, and I think uh, Elon and the Tesla team would even agree with that, that they're not trying to clear out the market. They just uh, you know want a, want a big piece of it. And with their, their platform, I think they're going to have a very large piece of it. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. And, and you know, I think this this encapsulates a lot of the competitive landscape really effectively, um, especially that note that you made on the the pricing. Right now, as you mentioned, flat rate of $4.20 for these robo-taxi rides. Um, but I, I would love to hear your perspective on, you know, you you mentioned this this idea that marketplace leadership is is the priority, not necessarily profitability of this, this business line at this present moment. How do you see these robo-taxis fitting into Tesla's larger business right now, knowing that as I mentioned at that, that introduction, sales have been sort of lagging a bit. Um, there has been some backlash to Elon Musk, given his involvement in you know, politics and the way that the business is being led and, and you know, any number of, of things that people say on, on Twitter or X, right? So how do you see this factoring into to Tesla's larger ambition, its larger business and, and its success over the medium and long term? Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, there were some I'm, I'm not going to get into the politics of, of, of Tesla and, and, and their perceptions because those will come and go and they'll mm -hmm. probably come again and go again. It's just kind of the, the way of, of this um, ecosystem and this company uh, right now. I think that the revenue that's coming in from these early access uh, tester rides is a brand new revenue stream. It's a new line item on their sheet. So you can't argue the fact that they have started a new stream of revenue that only has one direction to grow should everything go well. So uh, their bottom line should improve purely from this revenue stream. Now, granted, there are some costs they need to recoup of this program and the, and the hardware that they have used to get to this point. So they may not be in the black yet, but generating revenue is a huge, huge milestone. And if they can scale quickly to all cities, this will be another option for consumers to choose from. And there is some advantage to getting into a robo taxi versus the other platforms such as a taxi or an Uber. Uh, I could count many situations where, uh, you know, I, I'm not really comfortable getting in an Uber all the time. Uh, I have to say, you know, I'm in Montreal at the moment and I got in an Uber in the Montreal airport and this car was filthy. 
Uh, it smelled and I, you know, but that's just the region I was in. I didn't, so I think much like branding a product, you know, a consistent experience across a brand, you get into one in one city, you get in one in another, it should feel the same. You should have the same experience. And that's not the case in an Uber environment where you're driving a personal, in a personal vehicle that someone owns. So I think that's an important part of, of the product. You know, some people are, are feel safer, maybe late at night without a driver driving them home um, and would rather have a robot drive them home safely. Um, and I think that's another great use case to think about uh, many, many people wanting. And I also just think that the proliferation of these robo taxis is not going to necessarily immediately kill the need to buy cars. I think this is going to be uh, the could be the elimination of everyone's second car very easily, though, you know, depending on if you live in a suburbia kind of environment or in a city in a city, this further uh, makes it easier to not need to own a car. Obviously, you live in a, in a metropolitan area, but if you live kind of in the suburbs and you got kind of one to drive your kids to soccer and you got the other one just kind of for the second person to have, that second car may not ever need to be purchased if uh, robo taxis are always available where you want to go. That is where I think Tesla sees this going the proliferation of robo taxis taking away the need for personal transportation to be owned uh, and it'll all be kind of a, a, a pay per drive service. Now, granted, that would require the deployment of millions and millions of vehicles available to have that uh, market penetration, but I think that's where they could see this going. But for the time being, I see it taking part of the ride-hailing uh, Uber, Lyft style uh, market share away and replacing it with a better, more stable branded product that is consistent across it, its entire brand, um, feeling very much like Waymo. But uh, most people I know have never, ever even seen or been in a Waymo. So I think um, getting into a driverless car is going to have a certain market penetration also. I know many people that would say, I'd never do that. I'm like... You got to take one or two and then you're going to see it. So crossing that threshold of getting that customer to take their first driverless ride is important. Uh, and in aviation, I like to throw this topic out there. A lot of people ask me as a pilot, well, when do you think you're not going to have a job anymore? You know, my son's in flight school now. Is he not going to have the ability of being a, a pilot in his later years? Uh, and I say, well, I think that the autonomous taxi industry is going to make people's comfort with driverless cabs to the point that there will be a day they would probably get on a pilotless airplane. We're not there yet, but I think it's how people will start to conceptualize the fact that the operator can actually be done more safely by software and automation. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a really interesting future to to ponder. You know, as I mentioned at that the beginning of, of this conversation, a lot of this feels like it is is from the Jetsons, but it's it's not that far off. You know, it wasn't so long ago that the idea of hailing a car on an app like Uber or Lyft felt very, very foreign and very new to us. And now it is it's a verb, right? It's an, it's part of our everyday vernacular. So uh, it's interesting to think about how these expansions happen, how this technological shift happens over, um, you know, lots and lots of time, and then suddenly there's a, a different reality. Um, yeah, so there's a there's a point I, I want to comment on um, technology penetration. You know, back mm -hmm. in the 2012 time frame, you know, people were starting to hear about this thing called Bitcoin and blockchain, and there were this Thanksgiving dinners where people start talking about it. The next thing you know, your aunts and your uncles and cousins learned about it. I'm like, you know, there might be something to that. I feel like we need a lot of those Thanksgiving and Christmas technological discussions to happen again where people go, you know, this robotaxi thing is real. I think we're right there now with FSD on Teslas. The older generations, like to my parents' age, are starting to go, huh, that's an actually interesting scenario. You know, maybe I'll try that. Um, you, we got to get that conversation going uh, about people trying these technologies for the first time, second time, third time, and then telling their friends, and then they will up and you know end up doing it. This robo taxi is not going to sell itself at your front door. You're going to have to hail it. Uh, you know, it's not like going into the grocery store and browsing an aisle and seeing a new brand of peanut butter that you're going to try. It's not going to be sold to you that way. It's going to be something that you have to try and figure out. And you're probably going to hear about it from your friends and family and their testimony of how much nicer or cleaner or safer it was is that what will sell it to you personally. Yeah, well, there you go. Dinner table conversation fodder right here. <laughs> Anything but politics, I'm sure my parents will be happy to, to hear about <laughs> there it. There you go. Thanksgiving. Uh, Chuck, this has been really, really wonderful. I, I so appreciate all of your um, you know, helpful and, and informative context around this this big headline. It's, it's certainly, as, as Elon Musk himself mentioned, a long time coming um, and something that I'm excited to continue to watch unfold. So thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. 
Absolutely. And, you know, I just want to give a shout out. We wouldn't be here with the hard work of the Tesla engineering team, the engineers that don't get named by name, their hard work and their hard efforts led by Ashok Alaswamy and, and Elon's uh, company. You know, uh, they're the ones that made this happen and they're the ones that delivered it and don't always get the credit. I'm here just uh, making sure that they get a little shout out because uh, I'm proud of them. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, engineers. All right. Well, <laughs> thanks so much, Chuck. Have a great one. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.